Does size matter? Sometimes it does. I'm Scott Weidenkiewicz, a storyteller with a camera talking about all the things that people like you and me are thinking about. I'm here at the MAP Worldwide Warranty here in New Jersey, and in this video, I'm going to answer a popular question from their customers. And remember, I publish new videos every Monday and Thursday whenever possible, so if you would like to hear or watch new videos, click the subscribe button now. So one more popular question that the MAP Worldwide Warranty gets is, Mirror or mirrorless? Now, I purposely picked the Canon M5 to demonstrate the mirrorless because I wanted to show you that sometimes small is too small, okay? Now, this is the Nikon D750. This is a pretty big lens. It's not the biggest camera that Nikon makes, but when combined with the 24 to 120 f4 lens, it is quite a large camera, especially when you put it next to the Canon M5. Canon M5 is Canon's mirrorless camera, and it is very small. It is extremely small. In fact, it is so small, it doesn't even feel like a camera. In my hands, it feels like a little toy. So, before we dive into why you would choose one versus the other, I want to talk about the differences between the two. So, this is a mirrored camera. If I take the lens off, you actually have a mirror right there and an optical viewfinder in the back. And what that means is that you're actually, when the light goes through the lens, it's hitting the mirror, bouncing up to the prism, and then coming out to the viewfinder. So what you see is actually what you see through the lens until you push the button. Now there is live view mode on the cameras, like on most modern cameras. So you can actually flip the mirror up and look at the sensor. And that is kind of where mirrorless comes in. Mirrorless has no mirror and no prism. When you take the lens off, all you see is a sensor. So what that means is you're always in live view mode, even when looking through the viewfinder. When looking through the viewfinder, you're actually looking through an, an electronic viewfinder, also known as an EVF. Now the advantages of a mirrorless camera is that you can get a much smaller size and much smaller lenses, depending on your, the crop of the sensor, and a very lightweight camera and you can still get some good quality images out of it. But the downside is that sometimes it feels like a toy. So in my hands, usually when I have a smaller camera, that's a mirrored camera, usually a smaller one, I'll have my pinky can't even get onto the grip. On, the, on this D750, my, my four of my fingers are on the front, my thumb's on the back. On a small mirrored camera, usually just the pinky is not on the front hanging off. But on this one, I almost have two fingers hanging off. That's how small it is. So it feels more like a toy. It feels more like a point and shoot camera that has a big lens on the front. Now you can put a smaller lens on it. They sell all sorts of lenses for these. Um, but again, it really depends. If you were traveling and you only want to bring one camera and one or two lenses, you can fit this in your pocket, literally fit this in your pocket if you really want to. So it's very compact. Now, and if you look at the screen, which flips down and up and stuff like this, is almost the size of the actual camera body. That's how small this camera is. And it's the same size screen, practically, on both these cameras. So think about that for a second. There's a big disadvantage when it comes to mirrorless though. If you were to go change lenses and you're not careful, all of your dust is going right onto that sensor. There's nothing to protect it. There's no mirror, and there is no shutter in front of it. It's just a bare sensor. If I'm gonna take the lens off on a mirrored camera, and you flip up the mirror, you're gonna see a shutter in there. It stays closed when the camera is off. Mirrorless does not do that. So there's, should you get one versus the other? It depends on your needs. Now, I have a Nikon TF, which is on the lighter side of the digital SLRs. I'm hoping the Nikon comes out with a full frame mirrorless soon, because it will be nice to have uh, control, be able to use all of my full frame professional Nikon lenses with a smaller, lighter body. It'll be nice to shed some weight. But Nikon's also doing some things like the D500 and the upcoming D850 are gonna be lighter, but bigger digital SLRs. So it really depends if you wanna shed some weight Mirrorless might be the way to go. I'm filming right now on a, on a mirrorless 
Micro Four Thirds camera, the Lumix GH5 from Panasonic, and it is a very nice camera. I only use it for video, I don't use it for stills. It is a beautiful camera. It actually is a size of a slightly smaller digital SLR, but it is mirrorless. But Canon, Fuji, Olympus, Sony, they all have tiny mirrorless cameras, if that's what you want. I'm not saying whether well, one's better than the other. They both can produce great images. They both have similar settings. It really depends on what is best for you. And like I always say to how to decide on what camera is, if you're interested in the Canon M5, get your hands on it first before you buy it because it might be too small for you or it might be too big for you. It really depends on you. Everybody is different. Settings wise, it's gonna have a lot of the same settings that all of the others do, but slightly different variances probably. The other thing is there's a lot of thinking to do about lenses. So this is a normal crop. So it's actually an 18 to 150 lens, but I don't, I do not believe you can take this lens and put it on their other uh, digital SLR mirrored cameras. I think this is designed only for this. So sometimes just like Nikon has their J series, which is their tiny crop sensor mirrorless cameras that are this size and smaller, those lenses only work on those cameras and not on the other Nikons. So it really depends on everything settings, features, size, and if you're comfortable with your sensor being exposed all the time to save that weight.